Good morning. Well, this is an exciting morning for those of you joining us online for our live broadcast. We have a, a few people here with us this morning. This is our soft opening where next week we'll be offering gathering both online live broadcasting, a morning 8.30 service, and a 10 o'clock in-person gathering as well. So uh, today you are going to be able to see at home what it's going to look like as we uh, put into practice some of the, the safety precautions, how we're going to take communion. Um, but we're really excited to start seeing some faces here with us. It's been, been lonely here in the sanctuary, and so uh, God is good, it's, and all the time. Today we are celebrating this Holy Trinity Sunday, and what a glorious time to be together to celebrate uh, just how wonderful God truly is. And so uh, we invite you at home or in person uh, to truly open our hearts this morning to God and to let His Spirit pour out upon us. And so let us begin with a word of prayer. The Lord be with you. With Father, you are so good. And Lord, when we contemplate the triune nature of who you are, Lord, it, it, it boggles our minds. And it's hard to understand, but it reminds us that in the times of our lives where it's hard to understand, that you make sense of it all. Lord, that we don't always have to understand, but have faith in you. And so, Lord, bless this time of worship this morning, and may everything we do, by word, and by action, and by song, bring glory to you in your name. Father, may you be honored today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come before the Lord this morning as we say, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Will you join me as we pray again together? Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants, grace, by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship you in unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us continue in worship together.
may be seated as we hear from the word of the Lord this morning. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, beginning in verse 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves, or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you fail to meet the test. I hope you will find out that we have not failed the test. But we pray to God that you may not do wrong, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason I write these things while I am away from you, that when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please stand as we profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He He was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Our Gospel this day is written in the 28th chapter beginning in the 16th. Verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some... And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Well, now would normally be when we would say all the kids come forward, but for now we need you to stay where you are, but I want you to pay special attention to what's getting ready to happen, okay? So, Mr. Scott, if you'll just stand right here, I appreciate that. So, did you hear in the gospel lesson today that we are sent out to make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the what? Father, what's next? Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, so there is this amazingly beautiful and powerful thing that we have in our faith. And that is the understanding that God is one God, but he is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that is mind-blowing. I mean, grown-ups in here, do you fully understand that? No. We, 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 We are excited because there are things about God that are so big that we just can't understand. It's a mystery. And and that's okay, but there are some things about the Trinity that we can understand and we celebrate. Okay, Mr. Scott, I have a wonderful job for you. I need you to hold my box. 
Okay, so the night before Jesus was arrested, or that night when he was arrested, and then the next day he was crucified, he shared some really important news with his best friends. He said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. He said, in fact, it's good for you that I'm going to go away because I can't send him until I go away. So I'm going to send my Holy Spirit, and that means I'm going to be with you forever. And he says, and and you're going to know, it's going to come on this day, and on that day you will know, Jesus says, that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I'm in you. Wow, that's so hard to understand. Well, these boxes help us understand a little bit better. I mean, it's still this huge, big mystery, but it does help us understand. So we're just going to pretend we don't put God in a box, but this is God the Father, okay? God the Father. Now, if you'll remember what I just said, Jesus said that on that day, you will know that I, Jesus, am in my Father. So here's God the Son, right? So he says, on that day, you're going to know that I am in my Father. And you will know that you... You are in me, Jesus. And you're also going to know that I, through the Holy Spirit, am in you. So where does this put me? I have to do this correctly. There we go. This put... Here we go. Guess what? If you love Jesus, you are also in the Trinity. You are in that family. You are with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You have been adopted in to the Trinity, and you are safe and protected in the triune God. Is that not the coolest thing ever? All right, it's, I still am trying to understand it as a grown-up, but it is really great news. Thank you, Mr. Scott. You can take the boxes back. All right, Deacon John. All right, thank you, Deacon Lisa. We're in the right place. I'm going to sing. Is that, is that okay with you guys? All right. Well, even if it's not, I'm going to sing anyway. Um, (laughs) Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. And who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise. He can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. So, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Good morning, Hope Point. Happy Trinity Sunday. In case you didn't know, I'm Deacon John. Uh, I am the latest steaming bread roll to come out of the clergy oven in this church. Uh, So that means that whenever your rector calls you and says, I have a, you you could preach on the June 7th, right? You go, yes, you should always look at the readings because it's probably going to be about the Trinity or something really like the hypostatic union or something difficult. (laughs) Um, But I'm honored to be here and to be with you to be able to share um, my heart and my thoughts on such a subject as, as God. It's always an honor to preach. Now, um, I'm just going to jump right into it because I only have 15 minutes, no less. So here we go. The Trinity is, as Aquinas once said, unintelligible and unimaginable to our average human perception. So let me just put it to you this way. God is Father. God is the Son. God is the Holy Spirit. God is three in one. The union of the Trinity is without any essential difference. Unity, but not necessarily sameness. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one. God expresses Himself, His unique, unified self, by creating, and His creation is diversity. Are you confused yet? Don't worry. 
I'm going to put it this way. The Father commands the work, the Son performs the work, and the Spirit gives the power to accomplish the work. So that in creation, God can speak through His Son, who is the Word of God, and His Spirit gives life to that which was created. There's not a particle in the universe, in other words, left untouched by Jesus Christ. Every person, in fact, in Scripture, in the Old Testament and the New, who encounter God, also encounters the Father, right, who encounters the Spirit and the Son. Still confused? Let me keep going. Christian truth, by its very nature, is not something that you really understand unless you experience it. And so in the same way with the Trinity, we can never really fully understand it just in our minds until we have encountered God. We experience the reality of that truth through God's love language, which is obedience. Did you know that? God's love language is obedience. As Henri de Lubac, the theologian, once wrote, give me someone who loves and he will then understand. You see? But ultimately, the Trinity is really about this one thing, and I want you to get this this morning. The Trinity is how we understand the love of God. God begins his creation by saying, let us make man in our image, right? And proceeds to create. Therefore, creation itself was purposed not in violence, not in rage, not in a battle, but in love. So the very existence of God answers this question, did God love before we, we even existed, right? Well, the answer is yes, yes, because God is in community. And because he loved then, he can love us now. We can trust his love now. A deity which does not know love before his creation has no proof that he or she could love us in the present. So it's that co-equal love in the Trinity which launches us as a church into mission. So why do we often, so often shrink back instead of leaning in? For example, um, yesterday, or yeah, two days ago, sorry, Lauren was my six-year anniversary. Now, when I first fell in love with Lauren, imagine if I had gone to my friends and said, hey guys, how do I tell others that I love Lauren? You would probably question whether or not I actually loved her in the first place. In a similar way, when it comes to our faith, either we lack love or we're unafraid, or we're afraid. See, we, it's natural to tell others about that which you love. But fear is the opposite of love. Fear is anti-creation. Fear causes us to shrink back instead of going out or going public. The Trinity is God in public on full display. For Jesus, as you all know, as the Scripture says, is the radiance of the glory of God. Kind of like whenever Facebook, whenever, when Facebook went public with its stock options, some of you probably remember this, the value went down. Because suddenly everybody realized what was really going on in that company, right? In, the same, in a similar way with our faith, when we take our faith public, we find out the true value of that which we possess. We find out what that we've been doing all of this time really has the most resonance, the most power. As the epistle lesson from today in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. So the question is this, how are we who are in Christ participating in the Trinity? That's the question. How are we, as Deacon Lisa said, fitting in that box, right? Now I'm going to give you three examples, and in, in, in lieu of this storytelling that, we've been, that we're going to be doing over this next sermon series, and so I'm just going to tell you three stories. First, there was a man named, once named Evan Roberts. Um, he was born in Wales in 1878. He was the son of a coal mining family, um, and a Methodist, and very radical, he was a very strange young man, okay? He would go work in the coal mine when he was a teenager, and every day he would wait at the entrance of the coal mine for all the coal miners to leave, and he would give them their scripture for the week to memorize. He was a weird guy. And, and, and so, but he's very passionate, right? And he was so passionate that his elders of the church, they really didn't know what to do with him, and they were so sick of trying to find things for him to do that they actually said, you know what? We know how we're going to calm him down. We'll send him to seminary. <laughs> And so he gets accepted, of course, he was very bright, very brilliant, but he was really hesitant to go to study um, 
at, this, at school because in his mind he thought that if, if I go, I'm, he was terrified that he could look at the cross. And this is, how, this is how intense he was. He felt that he knew that he had backslidden or shrunken back in his faith if he could look at the cross and not be brought to tears. And sure enough, after studying for a certain amount of time, Evan Roberts found that he could learn to look at the cross, and suddenly he wasn't as moved as he had been before. All of his fears had come true. And before that, he had, be, he had begun to ask God to give him souls for his country in Wales. And he asked for 100,000. So one day while he is in school, they're in the chapel service, and the, the evangelist who was leading the service was t- telling them, men, get on your knees and ask God to bend you, to bend you for souls. And all he was saying over and over again was, bend us. Ask God, say, bend us. But he actually didn't hear it properly. In his heart, he heard something else. He heard God saying, ask me for whales. And so he got up, he left the meeting early, because that's just how Evan Roberts was. He just like, do what I want, you know? He just leaves, he goes to the other side, of the, the other area of the chapel, and he begins to pray. And his only prayer was, God, bend me for whales. It wasn't very long before he dropped out, and he, went and, he got, and he got asked to speak in front of a prayer meeting. And while he was speaking, he said one thing. I just want to announce to everybody here that God is moving in Wales. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and sits down. And sure enough, and within, within a year, Evan Roberts was a household name in Wales. He began to hold meetings, they, they, and they would begin to pray, and actually meetings would happen all over the country as this desire suddenly filled people's hearts to pray and seek God. You know, it was a strange guy. One time he walked into a packed, um, a packed uh, sanctuary, and, and they had been waiting for him for a while, and he starts skipping up the aisle to get to the front, literally skipping, takes his hat off and says, how many of you believe that where two or more are gathered, God is in their midst? And they said, oh, amen, brother. And he says, well, I guess you won't be needing me. Puts his hat back on, leaves the sanctuary, and the power of God falls. Another time, he gets up to preach. And before he gets up to preach, he gets on his knees, and for for hours he prays. For hours. And they're like, what is going on? They begin to pray. Then he decides God's got a message he's given me. He gets up in front of the, the pulpit, speaks for 15 minutes. That's it. Leaves the power of God falls. Now, it is a fact. God actually did bring over 100,000 people to faith in Wales during that short time period that Evan was contending for great things. And they've even been able to trace the revival from from Wales to the revival in Azusa Street in 1904 as connected. And of course, as many of you know, the Azusa Street revival gave birth to the modern Pentecostal movement and was one of the first movements to actually include people of many different races and to actually elevate um, each other in that way. It's really powerful stuff. An uneducated son of a coal miner asked God to bend him for whales. And the question really is this, what is God asking us to bend ourselves for this morning? He said, God, give me whales. Jim Elliott was a missionary to Ecuador's um, Indians, uh, Quechia Indians, which was an unreached people group. They had never heard the gospel before in the entire history of their people. And they had spent, as missionaries, many years trying to make meaningful contact um, with these people groups. And when they finally did, and were finally able to start building relationship, something that Jim, that Jim Elliott had built his whole life into doing, right, which is reaching this people group, they were killed, martyred. Because they were the, the, the group that had gathered, the Irish group had told each other that they were actually there to enslave them, when it was quite the opposite. They had lied, and they died. So what was it, a waste? All that effort, all that prayer, all that desire that God had filled him with? No, actually, because something even more radical happened. The wives of those dead men took their children to that same village and saw the entire place converted through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They practiced enemy love and forgiveness. And suddenly, an entire people group 
came to faith. Jim Elliot was famous for, for writing in his journal. And before he died, he said this one thing. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. God called him, like Jesus, to die long before he actually died. And in the same way, God calls us in the gospel, in the cross, calls us to die so that his glory may be revealed in his creation. God bent Jim Elliot for Ecuador. What is God asking you to bend yourself for? The last thing is, a, the last example I'll give is a bit of a personal uh, story. Back in 2011, I was also filled, like those two men, with such unbearable longing. I remember I was in my, uh, frequently throughout the night in my bedroom praying to God, wondering why everything that I had read in the book of Acts, I'd never actually saw happen in my life. And I started a Bible study on campus, and it was the great shrinking Bible study. You ever heard of that, the shrinking Bible study? We went from 20 to 15 to 10 to like 2. I think I remember we ended that semester with two, and I was extremely discouraged. And so one day I was walking on campus, and I felt suddenly the anguish of the Spirit for that place, right? Because evangelism is not just about whether or not I know what I'm saying, when I'm saying it, or how to do it. What we talk about when we talk about evangelism is being the heart of God, people that we're by. That's the, the main issue. And I remember I was in the parking lot feeling the anguish of God for those people, and I felt God tell me to get on my knees and pray a prayer. And I said, God, bend me for this campus. And that, same week I announced to my, that same week, I announced to my speech class, because my professor let me do that because I could do those kinds of things. <laughs> uh, I announced to them that God was in this place, and He was moving, and if they wanted to join up, they could. And sure enough, uh, two, uh, there were two girls who came out of that, two uh, female leaders who came out of that classroom who essentially stayed with the ministry for another five or six years after that. It was amazing. And within a month, we saw over 100 students frequently congregating, congregating in our um, free speech area in that, in that college. And that's actually how I met uh, Bishop Clark, uh, was through that ministry and how we're essentially here what God did there. We saw so many people come to faith. But again, it comes back to this idea that how we participate in the Trinity essentially starts with us saying to God, I will give of myself completely to you, bending myself to your desire, to your will for my life. So when Jesus launches his disciples in Matthew 28, telling them to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He is God in Genesis 1, launching the new creation. He is asking His disciples to bend themselves for the nations, which He is also asking each one of us. My charge to you this morning is to let go of the fear. Let go of the fear that it might not turn out the way that you thought it would. Let go of the fear that it may be too much work for you, that you do not have time. Let go of the fear that says that I'm not enough. For God to use and submit to him on your knees before a holy God saying bend me bend us God for this nation bend us for Texas bend us for the woodlands Lord bend us for Wales participating in the Holy Trinity is like 2nd Corinthians 5 17 where Paul says for any man who is in Christ he is a new creation see you are as as the example gave, given by Deacon Lisa this morning, put in Christ, therefore you are in the Trinity, and you are then called to be put on full display in Him. You are, as that hymn that I sang um, earlier, called to share of that love. That hymn, by the way, which was launched out of the Welsh revival. Here is love, fast as the heavens, countless as the stars above are the souls that he has ransomed. Precious stars, treasured sons. We are called to feast forever on a love beyond our time. Glorious Father, Son, and Spirit, now with man are intertwined. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.
you, Deacon John. As Deacon John shared, God's love language is our obedience. And as people who are in Christ, people who are walking lives of faith, lives of faith and repentance, we do ask the Lord to bend our will to his will. And one of the ways that we live that out is through confession. We confess as individuals countless times throughout the week and through the days, but when we come together, we confess as the body of Christ. So if you will remain seated, we will confess to our Lord that he would bend our will to his will. Almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west, strengthen your life in his kingdom, and keep you upright to the last day. Through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. And with that in mind, May the peace of God be always with you. If y'all would greet one another in the name of Christ with some peace signs, some waves, some distance high fives. I turned my mic off because I could hear myself like Darth Vader through the speakers. So um, we are glad you are, are with us. If you are visiting or you're online and you're looking for a church home, we hope that you find that Hope Point is a place where the Holy Spirit is present and is moving. And we invite you to, to come and join us next week. Uh, anyone who uh, is ready to come back and worship in person, we are going to have that available but we are asking for registrations, so please go online to our, our website and let us know how many of you are coming. Uh, we already are about at 50% capacity the last time I checked, and we don't ever want to turn anyone away from worship, but as we practice what the CDC is asking of us for spatial distancing, um, if we get full, we will send out an email and let you know that it might require some people to worship online uh, in live broadcast. And just know this, remember, as I said in my email in my letter a couple weeks ago, this is a dance and it's going to ever be shifting. And we're going to go with uh, how we need to move. And if we need to add additional services, and we're going to do what it's going to take, but be patient and just keep us all in prayer as uh, we're learning as we go. Um, and it's true. So I'm an awkward dancer, and so it might look awkward a little bit as, as we're exploring what we're doing, uh, but the good news is that God is with us, and he is present. So we will continue to figure this out together. Um, a reminder, if you have been struggling, if this pandemic has had a negative effect on you spiritually, emotionally, financially, we are here to help. We don't always know what's going on when we don't see you every week, so please reach out to one of us as clergy if you need prayer or you need ministering to. And remember, we have this ministry, Acts to Help. You can email acts to help at hopepoint.org and let us know if, if you need some help financially. We've had some very generous givers who know that to be the, the early church model of Acts 2, it meant distributing amongst the needs of the people. And so we do have finances available to help with bills, uh, to encourage you that we are here for you, and you're not alone in this time, in this season. So please, don't be too prideful. If you need help, reach out, ask, and we want to help. 
And then Deacon John, you have some youth announcements? <laughs> yes, uh, as many of you know, we've, so you, we've been trying to come up with a schedule for the summer, and given everything that's been happening in the world around us, it's been quite difficult to kind of figure out what it is that we're going to do together. So beginning this Wednesday, we begin uh, small groups for our youth, actually, and we got four great host families who decided to take that on. And every other week, we're going to rotate between a small group and then a social event on Wednesday night. So if you're interested and you have a student who would like to join, uh, then please come, come contact me or talk to me or talk to Father John, our head of family life. We would love to talk to you. And so we're very excited about our schedule, and it's going to be a good time. Thanks, Deacon John. If you are joining us today, uh, you will, if you're online, you'll be able to watch how communion's happening. And Deacon Lisa's going to explain a little bit about that in a second. But if you are not with us here in person, uh, we invite you to join us for drive through communion today from 1115 to 1145. We know it's a shorter window, but um, if, if you're ready, you get going right after the service, you should be able to, to make that window happen. And remember, don't forget to register early for services next week. And then if you are looking for a place to serve right now and you've been longing to be back at church we have opportunities that it takes a lot more greeters, a lot more ushers to get people seated for dismissal. So please contact Father John or Deborah Schmidt and let them know that, um, that you are willing to help. It's going to take, take, take a village to make this happen. So please uh, reach out to them and let them know if you're willing to help. And Deacon Lisa, will you please explain why we have shot glasses down here on the table that are not shot glasses? Absolutely. So... Um, because of the wonderful ministry of our ushers, they are going to walk you through everything. So you don't need to have any fear or anxiety about coming to communion. We have uh, squares in front of the communion rails, and those squares are for units, either families or couples or singles. And the ushers will let you know when you are to come up to your square, and you will be um, given the bread, and you'll be given a cup when you are in your square. And you may either eat the bread at that point, and then uh, a deacon will come by with flagon and pour some wine into your little cup, and you may drink the cup. Now, if you wish to intinct, make sure you don't eat the bread. Wait till the wine is poured. You may intinct in the cup. And then um, some of you will still have some wine left in your cup. Now, the bread and the wine have become the body and blood of, of Christ and they are now consecrated and holy. So we don't just throw that away. So we have vessels, glass vessels, at the end of each rail. So whatever wine you have left over in your cup, we're asking you to pour that into the, into the glass vessel, and then you may put your cup in the little receptacle next to that. Now the reason we do that is because we, we will return that to the earth, our, our table care, ministry will take that and then they will return that wine to the earth and that's the appropriate way for us to handle that consecrated wine um, and then you will go back and take your seats did i leave anything out oh we will be standing at the rail we will not be kneeling at the rail anything else is that it okay we'll see how it goes right okay Great. Father Travis. Thank you, Deacon Lisa. As we move into our time of Holy Communion, ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
communion, um, we invite you to partake here with us today or drive through communion. We also have spiritual communion available in the notes section of the, uh, of the platform online. And just for those of you, who, as we continue to pray about how to do things in the best possible way, as we consecrate these elements, we will partake from these elements, but we have reserved sacraments that we'll distribute amongst the people. And then th this these elements will be for communion next week for the people. So that way uh, we make sure that we don't, we don't believe that anyone has ever gotten sick from taking the elements, but just as an extra measure uh, for people's comfort, we'll be doing it that way. And so uh, as we continue, I ask you the question, is the Father with us? Yes. Is Christ among us? Yes. Is the Spirit here? This is our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are His people. We are redeemed. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise. Great Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver, from a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. And for a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, and remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and and life. And now we give you thanks, because in the incarnation of the eternal word, a new light was dawned upon the world, and those who sat in darkness and under the shadow of death have seen the light. Therefore, with the angels, archangels, faithful ancestors, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded on the same night that he was betrayed. He took bread and he gave you thanks. 
He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave you thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We celebrate, O Father, your sacrifice for our redemption, and in thanksgiving we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And may this become nourishment for our bodies and souls. And may you draw us ever closer to you. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, through his blood, we have died together, we will rise together, we will live together. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory. Alleluia. I am because we are. We are because he is. We are one body. We share Draw near with faith. The host and the These are the gifts of God given to us, the people of God, and so we take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for us, and we feed on them by faith and with great thanksgiving.
Son, we need you. We cry out, Holy Spirit, we need you now more than ever. Fill our hearts that our cups may overflow, that our love will shine forth in this world as we go and proclaim that you are good. So, Lord, we thank you for feeding us with this spiritual gifts, this bread, this wine. Lord, that we have been renewed by your grace. Continue to renew us and refresh us every day, Lord, that we proclaim you are indeed King. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, all our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's work we send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes we set on the risen Christ. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and the love of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now... Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.